Welcome to Masters for Operation uh, 2 course. Uh, today, I will start discussing on this liquid liquid extraction. The syllabus is uh, as follows Introduction to liquid liquid extraction, liquid liquid equilibria, then effect of temperature on liquid liquid equilibria, design calculation of single stage extraction, design calculation of multi stage extraction, and finally, selection of the extractors. Uh, now, we will be discussing on introduction to liquid liquid extraction followed by this liquid liquid equilibria. So, in the beginning we need to understand the process liquid liquid extraction that is liquid liquid extraction sometimes it is designated as LLX. It is a mass transfer operation in which a solution containing this feed that is a mixture of solute and carrier solid is brought into intimate contact with a second uh, immiscible or slightly miscible liquid in order to achieve the transfer of the solute or solutes from the feed to the extracting solvent. The solute rich phase is called extract and the residual liquid that may have the little of the solute left uh, in it is called raffinate. So, if we say this one schematically say the feed is of these uh, dots and with the we can say the carrier solvent it is initially there in the beaker and then second liquid actually is fed inside this beaker and it is mixed properly to get this suppose uh, homogeneous mixture and it is allowed for a long period of time. So, that the uh, two liquids will be separated from each other due to this density uh, difference and the solute or this we can say this one target component that is the dot now is distributed like this it is maximum amount of the dot has gone to this extracting solvent and minimum amount of the uh, solutes are present in the carrier solvent. And if it is allowed for a long period of time then it will be separated into two different uh, liquid phases. This one is that we can say this one reach in the uh, solute that is we can say this an extract phase and the raffinate means the exhaust phase where the we can say the small amount of the solute will be present. Now, uh, this extraction mechanism that is, this is very simple mechanism that uh, firstly we need to bring the feed and the extracting solvent into the intimate contact by dispensing one phase into the other as the droplets. Suppose, in the beginning we have the feed with the solute and the carrier solvent and then we uh, will be adding this extracting solvent uh, in, into this feed and then we have to mix this properly. So, that it will be dispersed as the droplets. Now, depending on the miscibility of the uh, target component that is solute in the extracting solvent say these two will be separated into the two different say the solute will be moving from this carrier solvent to the extracting solvent. So, now we can say the second step will be separation of the extract and the raffinate phases. So, we, we it is dependent on the density difference between the two solvents. Now, we need to do the third step is that a most important uh, step that is removal and recovery of the solute from the extract phase in a relatively pure form and the fourth one that is we can say this one the residual part that is removal and recovery of the solvent from the say from each uh, phases like this we can say this one from the extract phase as well as this um, raffinate phase. So, by distillation usually, but there are so many other ways also. Now, if we talk about the economics of the extraction process, then it is very uh, interesting also. In a typical liquid liquid extraction process, only about 15 percent of the capital cost goes towards the extractor and the remaining 85 percent goes towards the distillation or we can see this on other equipment of the solvent recovery and product purification. And in terms of we can see this on cost, only 5 percent of the operating cost actually is required for extractor and remaining 95 percent uh, towards the solvent recovery. So, we can see the from the economic point of view, the extraction is not stand alone process, but it is dependent on other separation process. But if there is no other alternative, 
uh, other than uh, extraction we need to go for that. So, we will be discussing this one like where the extraction favors our distillation process. So, there are so many, but um, here we are giving some examples like this the components to be separated uh, have this close boiling points. So, then distillation using distillation we cannot be separating these two components. If the relative volatilities also are close to unity, then number of trays in the distillation column will be very large and then extraction will favor over this distillation process. Sometimes we can say this one heat sensitive material to be separated like uh, antibiotics, vitamins etcetera using this extraction process, then we can say this one distillation process. Sometimes uh, recovery of non volatile uh, solutes usually from aqueous uh, solutions in a hydrometallurgy that is done by extraction process. And uh, suppose the for a very dilute solution, there we cannot separate using this distillation process or any other processes, but there extraction process can efficiently separate the target components from the dilute solution. And some removal of the organics from the aqua streams like phenols from aqueous wastes are done by extraction process, where that cannot be separated by distillation process. So, few uh, examples of the solvent extraction process we will be discussing here, then we will be uh, going into the details of the extraction process. Like this, uh, first example is extraction of aromatics in petrochemical industry like this benzene, toluene, xylene, uh, these are separated from petroleum fraction by furfural, sulfonyl or NMP, diethylene glycol or methyl, methyl ethyl ketone or methyl isobutyl ketone etcetera, these are all extracting solvents. And uh, say recovery and concentration of antibiotics like we can say penicillin, it is only recovered using this extraction process other than other masters for operations. Like the penicillin is produced by fermentation, we know this one the from the fermentation broth, uh, we can separate this penicillin uh, using this extraction process. The concentration of the penicillin in the fermentation broth uh, ranges from 20 to 30 gram per liter. And the recovery and concentration of pen pen penicillin actually is done usually using a solvent such as say amyl acetate or butyl acetate or methyl isobutyl ketone. So, we can get this one very uh, schematically we can explain this one very easily like this. Uh, so, uh, we have this fermentation broth like this around pH 2 it is extracted using in the water. So, we can say this at around pH 2 penicillin remains in the acid form and has a low solubility in water, but it is uh, extracted in this uh, system. But once we will be increasing the pH up to 7.5, say, but it favorably transported to the organic solvent from the aqueous fermentation broth because of the high distribution of the coefficient. So, so whenever we will be adding some amount of the solvent here and then say we can say this one due to this high distribution coefficient, uh, it will be going to this uh, organic solvent. Then, this one pH is maintained at around say 7.5. So, in that pH say the this pH actually dependent distribution of penicillin in the water ester pair is made a use uh, of to recover purify and the concentrate from the broth. Total experiment actually is carried out at 40 degree Celsius. So, at uh, pH 7.5 it is we can say this one um, the uh, penicillin actually comes to the aqueous extract and whatever the solvent actually is used here to extract, it is now almost free from the penicillin, it is recycled back to the system. So, this way we can say this one uh, the uh, um, extract and we can say this one uh, from the extract after separating the uh, target component, the whatever the extracting solvent is uh, again reused for the same extraction process for so many cycles. Now, the another example is the extraction of caprolactam that is uh, we can say this used to manufacture this nylon 6. So, it is uh, synthesized from the cyclohexane, we know this one we are not going to the details of the process, but we will be discussing the one step where the we can say this one we can use the extraction process to separate a particular target component like this cyclohexanone uh, oxime. Like this uh, we can start with the cyclohexane, then from the cyclohexane to cyclohexanol, 
from then it is to cyclohexanone, then the step is cyclohexanone oxime and then from this cyclohexanone oxime to caproleptam. So, in this step we can see this is the last step of the process involves the reaction of the oxime with sulfuric acid to get the caproleptam and forms this caproleptam and ammonium sulphate. So, the reaction mixture separates into an organic rich phase where we can say this one caproleptam is there that is called lactam oil that contains 65 to 70 percent caproleptam. These two phases are fed at the appropriate locations of a rotating disc contactor that is we can say this one extracting unit that uh, toluene is used as the extracting solvent. Then caproleptam goes to the extract means uh, uh, in the um, toluene phase and ammonium sulphate actually remains in the raffinate or we can see in the organic or aqueous phase. These two streams are further treated uh, to get the caproleptam in a pure form and to recover the solvent and ammonium sulphate. So, all this will be again used for different uh, purposes and uh, the other few other applications are like the in food industries and pharmaceuticals, in metallurgical and say environmental and organic and environmental industries. So, there are so many applications of the extraction process, we will be discussing the details of the extraction process now. So, uh, before that actually we need to understand the um, equilibria that is liquid liquid equilibria and uh, now also we will be learning about the ternary diagram. Uh, to understand the liquid liquid equilibria. Suppose, our liquid liquid extraction system contains uh, at least three components like this, uh, one will be the solute that, that is we can say this target component. So, we will take this as solute C and uh, carrier liquid actually in the feed that is we can say this one when we have this feed uh, C is dissolved in A and we are adding this extracting solvent from the outside. So, this is we can say this one B for the entire extraction calculation as well as this whenever we will be discussing about the leaching process that is a solid liquid extraction there also we will be using these notations like solute as C, carrier liquid as A and extracting solvent as B. So, uh, the, now we need to understand the uh, classification of the ternary system. Suppose, now we have this A this we can say carrier solvent, B is the extracting solvent and C is the solute. So, out of these three components, we have two binary system like this three binary systems A B, B C and C A. So, mutually mutual miscibility behavior of the component determines the nature of the equilibrium diagram. So, what type of equilibrium diagram actually will be there that will be determined by the mutual miscibility of a, B and C. Like say the first system is like this, we can say this one solvent and extracting solvent. Say carrier solvent and extracting solvent are practically miscible, immiscible. So, that is we can say this one, that is one system say we can say it, it, it is uh, of no use in general we can say this one in the liquid liquid extraction system. If uh, solute is not we can say this one uh, miscible, uh, this one carrier solvent and uh, extracting solvent are practically immiscible. So, that is we can say this one, these two are not miscible to each other, but we can say this one solute C can be miscible with both A and B. And the second uh, type is called we can say this one, the solute is miscible with uh, carrier solvent and extracting solvent in all proportions that is we can say this one type 1. This is a we can say this one very good type of the uh, we can say this one uh, ternary system, where we can say this one uh, both carrier solvent and extracting solvent have the miscibility of uh, target component in all proportions. And the uh, last category like this, the we can see this one solute C is completely miscible with carrier solvent, where the feed is, but both solute and we can say this carrier solvent have limited miscibility with the extracting solvent B. So, that is we can say this one type 2. So, we have this both type A 1 and type 2 um, and based on their miscibility actually we will be discussing the liquid liquid equilibrium curve. So, uh, before that we need to understand that equilateral triangular coordinate and we need to understand this very precisely otherwise we will not be able to solve any 
uh, extract some problem. Let us take a mixture of M like here. So, whenever we will be talking about say 100 percent A means this one, then say 0 percent A will be in this line. So, this is we can say 0 percent A. So, this is 20 percent A, then this is 40 percent A, this is 60 percent A, this line stands for 80 percent A and this tip is 100 percent A. So, we can say this for M, we have this 20 percent A. So, we can say this one carrier liquid contains 20 percent A here. So, whenever we will be talking about this 100 percent B means say this one we can say this one 0 percent B, then 20 percent B, then we can say 40 percent B, this is 60 percent B, and this is 80 percent B, this is 100 percent. So, this is we can say this one 20 percent B is there. So, this one whenever we will be talking about this 100 percent C. So, this is 0 percent C, this 20 percent B, then it is 40 percent B, this line 60 percent B this is 80 percent B, this is 100 percent, this tip stands for 100 percent C. So, this line uh, this one corresponds to 60 percent C. So, in all points C population is 60 percent. So, then we can say this one for M, A contribution of A is 20 percent, B is 40 percent, 20 percent and C is 60 percent. So, all these are actually in the liquid phase. So, all A, B, C all are in the liquid phase. So, we can say this one carrier liquid contribution is 20 percent, extracting solvent is 20 percent and uh, this one um, solute is we can say this one 60 percent. And this convention will be used uh, for the entire extraction study. Now, we will be discussing about this type 1 and type 2 where this we can say this one liquid liquid equilibrium is. is say C is miscible with A and B in all proportions. We can say this one all proportions for any proportion. So, we can say this one A and say C will be miscible in all proportions. Like this say we can say this cap this we can start from R to P to S. So, in between this one we can say this one this is binary phase zone. So, here you see we will be discussing in detail about the uh, binary phase or we can say this one two phase region, where we can say this one from R to P. So, that is actually you can say A this 100 percent A means this is we can say this one carrier solvent. So, carrier carrier solvent rich zone. So, this is we can say this one raffinate arm. We learn this one that uh, whenever the exhaust stream will be there where this less amount of the solute will be present. So, you see the solute also will be very less amount because 100 percent is here. So, definitely this less amount of the solute will be present in the carrier solvent and this B is actually we can say this one extracting solvent. So, B is extracting solvent. So, here from uh, P to S that we can say this one raffinate arm. A, that is say extract arm. So, this one we can say this one from R to P this is raffinate arm, from P to S this is extract arm. Okay. So, this suppose for uh, this two phase in this two phase equilibria line, so suppose from G 1 and H 1, suppose G 1 and H 1 this is connected with one tie line. So, this two liquid phases are in equilibria and from suppose from G 2 to R H 2 that is also in the equilibrium. Suppose, we have added uh, this one extracting solvent in the feed and we have mixed this properly. Suppose, this K is one particular point and uh, we can say this one uh, K is a particular we can say uh, um, composition. If we wait for a while or we can say this one if we allow this entire system to be separated from each other, then it will be separated like this with G 2 composition it will be in the raffinate phase and H 2 composition in the extract phase. And that is why G 2 and H 2 that is we can say this one tie line. So, G 1 is rich in the carrier we can say this one G 1 G 2 both are rich in the we can say this one raffinate and H 1 is rich in the extracting uh, we can say this one solvent that is called H 1, H 2, H 3 all these are we can say this one uh, extract and say G 1, H 1, G 2, H 2, G 3, H 3 
all these are we can say this one these are all tie lines and then one point is there that is a common point that is p we say this one is the plate point we will be discussing in detail about that and then this point p that is determines or demarcates the raffinate and the extract sites so, i told that this is on rp this part you can say this one as this raffinate raffinate arm and this is we can say this one extract arm so these two so these uh, graphenate and extract sides actually of the equilibrium curve that is called say p is called plate point the, this type of uh, curve actually this rps is called this binaural because it has two arms like rp and ps okay a liquid mixture having this overall composition corresponding to point k suppose i told that say this overall composition k is there and we are waiting for a long period of time so that these two will be separated into two different phases liquid phases one we can say this one raffinate and another uh, this one uh, extract so this composition will be g2 will be the raffinate uh, phase concentrate uh, composition and h2 will be the extract phase composition. So, keeping undisturbed it is separates into two phases at equilibrium. The compositions are we can see this in G 2 and H 2. So, this amount actually will be obtained by this liver rule that is we can see this one G 2 G 2 divided by H 2 equal to say this one opposite arm this K H 2 by K G 2. So, this is we can say this one using this liver rule we will be able to get the what will be the composition of the extract arm and the raffinate arm or we can say this in extract composition and raffinate composition and it is actually controlled by this what is called the tie line. Okay. The another type what is we told that this A, B and B, C are partially immiscible. So, in that case there is no plate point. So, this raffinate arm will be like this and uh, we can say this one extract arm will like this and then tie lines all the tie lines are um, uh, this one obtained in this way. So, this is one tie line we can say this one in the we can say this um, B, C the line where we can say the 100 percent C is present and also in between this A, B this line this is also one uh, tie line. Okay. So, here there is no plate point, but you see we will be also discussing this one if we do something modification here also we will be able to get the tie line plate point in this the type of type 2 system or we will be discussing this one in detail about that the conversion of type 2 system into type 1 system. So, we will be discussing in detail also on that. Now, we will be uh, this one uh, drawing this right angle triangular diagram from the we can say this one ternary diagram. So, let us take say we have drawn this we can say a small part of this ternary diagram just uh, we have not mentioned the C part actually this uh, where the C 100 percent C is present that part because you see in the extraction process also we will see that this 100 percent C cannot be this one separated using this one. So, uh, that part actually is not so important. So, we will be discussing this part where the equilibrium is means uh, binary phase zone is there suppose here actually this binary phase is there we told that this binary phases are like this uh, where the we can say this one uh, C is miscible in any proportions into both A and B or we can say the carrier solvent and the extracting solvent which has this plate point. Like this the mass fractions of the solute in two phases like this in the raffinate and extract at equilibrium are plotted against the corresponding mass fraction of the solvent. So, that is uh, we will be drawing also uh, from this we can say this one right angle triangular diagram we will be able to get the say we can say this one equilibrium values of this x c and y c how we will be drawing this one we are discussing in detail like this. So, concentration of the extract phase are suppose this one up to this we can say this one. So, uh, that will be say from q point to p point we can say this one will be x p versus x c that is why that is x p versus x c and after that point p to r it is actually we can say this one y b versus y c that is y b versus y c is there, but whenever we will be drawing one tie line you see this all these are actually drawn from the tie line data. Suppose this p has this we can say this one p will be lying for in the say diagonal of this x c and y c because you see the p is the common point where we can say this one here you see the in plate point x c is equal to 
y c that's why we say this one is the tie line at the plate point so this is corresponding to plate point this plate point and whenever we will be drawing any tie line suppose the this is the one tie line so from here what we will be doing this is corresponding to you can say this one this x c and y c also suppose this is this is y c and this is x c ok. So, that is why whenever we will be coming to this point that is we can say this one this is y c this one is y c and corresponding value this one is called this corresponding value actually is called this x c this is x c. So, whenever the equivalent to x c whatever the y c value is there from this tie line we will be able to get this one. So, we have this x c and we have this y c this is one cutting point. Let us take this tie line here also you see this one is x c value we will be coming to this diagonal line and corresponding this actually is y c value means say how we will be getting this one we will be extending this x c and up to y c value then whenever it will be meeting one point. So, that way for all the tie line values we will be getting this common points for any x c value suppose this another y c value is there. So, using this one we will be getting the common points like this way. So, then we will be able to get the say we can say this one equilibrium line and whenever we will be joining this equilibrium line we will be getting that the corresponding to x c value what will be the y c value. Okay. And we will be frequently we will be drawing this uh, equilibrium curve for the extraction calculation and say we can say this one for the extract phase uh, in all the cases we will be denoting y a, y b and y c and uh, those are the raffinate phase we will be taking this one the x a, x b and x c. So, these are the common notations actually we will be using for the entire extraction calculation. Then the raffinate arm p q is obtained by plotting the the points like this x b and x c suppose this raffinate arm will be getting this one by plotting this x b and x c and extract arm will be getting from this plate point by plotting this y b versus y c. So, we will be getting this one. So, raffinate arm will be getting by plotting this set of y b and versus y c. Okay. So, the here also this p is the plate point and uh, point d 1 actually on the raffinate arm and d 2 on the extra arm represent the composition at the equilibrium that we told that say uh, whenever we have this d 1 and d 2 say from d 1 we can say this one nothing but this is the uh, x c value. So, this is we can say this one corresponding to x c and uh, so whenever this we have this x c we will extend this one and from here you see this one y c will be getting suppose this is y c value whenever it will be cutting. So, it, it will touch this line. So, d 1 d 2 that is the tie line. So, all the tie line values actually all the tie line data points are there and from there we will be able to get the we can say this one equilibrium line. Okay. Also equilibrium diagram can also be drawn on the x c y c plane also that also uh, we can say this one will be uh, discussing this one. So, means uh, this one or this one anything will be ok for this one what is called general calculation. And uh, in another way also that is also very convenient uh, method uh, of this uh, equilibrium plot on the solvent free basis. Like this in this uh, presentation of this uh, liquid liquid equilibrium data, the mass ratio of the solute we can say this one in x and y in two phases like this we can say this one uh, are plotted like this we can say this for capital X we can say this one uh, capital L X and small z will be in the raffinate phase and capital Y and capital Z in the extract phase will be used this one. So, that is we can say this one all the values are in the solvent free basis. We will be discussing the advantages of the solvent free basis calculation also. So, uh, the quantities capital X, capital Y, small z and capital Z are defined like this. So, we need to remember this one capital X is equal to small x c by small x a plus a small x c and where the small z is equal to small x b by small x a plus small x c. Whereas, this y that is in the we can say this one extract uh, composition that is equal to y c by 
uh, y a plus y c, where capital Z that is we can say this one y b by y a plus y c. So, this capital X and small z that we can say this one that is in the raffinate phase composition and uh, in a extract phase that is capital Y capital Z. So, we will be calculating this one, we will be solving one small problem to understand that uh, whenever we will be uh, drawing this equilibrium plot on the solvent free basis and from there actually the we can see the all the calculations are very simple. This diagram that is we can see this in the, the equilibrium plot of the uh, we can see this extract arm and in the, in the raffinate arm is called this Janicki plot or we can see this one uh, Meloni Savart diagram also or we can see this one Janicki diagram. So, it is very convenient way of this one um, calculation for the extraction process. Like you say we will be solving one problem very simple problem actually how to plot this one and from there we will be able to know that uh, uh, how this uh, we can say this one equilibrium plot is done on the solvent free basis. The problem is that draw the Janicki diagram for a liquid liquid system using the following equilibrium data. Also show the tie line uh, in the diagram. Like this in the raffinate phase, say we have this x a is equal to suppose 0 0.939, where is the x p is equal to 0 0.0601 where x c is equal to 0. So, in one point that is we can say this in the left hand corner, where we can say this only the extracting solvent and uh, we can say carrier solvent is there, there is no solute like this and uh, say this one x a is going on decreasing slowly and somewhere we can say this one no extracting solvent is present, where this x b is there and x c value means we can say the solute con contribution is maximum in the raffinate arm, where 0.88. Uh, 97 come percent is there. So, if we add all this we will be getting 1 and for extract phase. So, we have this one we can say uh, whenever this point uh, 0 06 y a is there and uh, say we can say this y b is maximum 0.94. So, and uh, say like this is the right hand corner actually and uh, we can say this one y c actually there also is 0. So, uh, whenever we will be plotting this one in the raffinate arm and extract arm, we will be getting one common point like this we will be getting this plate point also. So, we will be coming to that point, this plate point also we will be getting, but we will be doing this one in the Janicki diagram means we will be plotting this one in the solvent free basis. Okay. So, for that we need to calculate this four uh, parameters like this capital X, small z, capital Y capital Z. So, this 4 will be calculating, then we will be plotting this uh, raffinate arm and extract arm in the say we can say this one solvent free basis in the equilibrium plot. Okay. So, now we will be calculating this one for this uh, all these data points we will be calculating those like this uh, what we will be doing for this uh, suppose for first uh, data point like this for the raffinate arm we have x is equal to 0 0.3939 x b is equal to 0 0.0601 and x c is equal to 0. So, we can say this one as uh, this uh, x value is equal to x c by x a plus x c. So, will be 0 by 0 0.939. So, it will be 0 like this. Okay. For second uh, this one uh, data point 0 0.73 uh, this one what is called for x c is equal to 0 0.0219 divided by 0 0.7327 plus 0 0.0219. So, it will be coming as we can say point 0 0.0239. For the third one like this is 0 0.4866 divided by 0 0.4404 plus 0 0.4866 it will be like this 0 0.525. And for the next point like this uh, 0 0.664, so it will be like this. 0.73 and uh, for 0.7923 uh, we will be getting this one 0.885 and for 0.8897 we will be getting this one as 0 0.8897 by 0 0.8897 that is we can see this one will be getting x equal to 1. 
for z calculation also we will be following the same x b divided by x a plus x uh, c. Suppose for first point point 0 0.0601 divided by 0 0.7327 plus 0 0.0219. So, we will be getting as like 0 0.064 for other point actually for the next point we will be getting point 0 0.067 for next point actually we will be getting point 0 0.079 this next point will be point 0 0.099 then it will be point 0.117 and then point 0.124. For capital Y, that is we can say this one for extra term. So, these, these two points are uh, this one for raffinate term. So, we will be drawing this one in x y versus z z plot actually this uh, all the values are we can say this one whenever x will vary from 0 to 1. You see small z values are all within we can say this one point 0.1 to 4 means say that is almost we can say this one uh, will be in the line of this z z uh, this one axis means uh, you can say it will almost along the x y line. Okay. And for extra term actually say we can say these two uh, this one points will be for raffinate term. Now, extra term actually we will be calculating like y is equal to y c by uh, y a plus y c like this y c is equal to 0. So, definitely this first point will be 0. Then we have this uh, this for second point we have this uh, y c value is 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.052 plus 0 0.03 that is we can say we will be getting this 0 0.366. And the third point will be like this for third point we have this 0 0.084 divided by 0 0.036 plus 0 0.084. So, that will be coming as 0 0.7 and the next point will be 0 0.876 and then the last next point will be 0 0.96 and the last point will be point uh, this one y c is equal to 0 0.17 uh, this one 54 divided by 0.1754 as y a is equal to 0. So, then it will be like this 1. Okay. Corresponding to capital Z value that is we will be starting with this middle values of like this y b. So, it will be work like uh, 0.94 divided by 0 0.06. So, 0.94 divided by uh, 0 0.06 it is coming as 15.67. Then second value will be 0 0.918 divided by 0 0.052 plus 0 0.03 that is coming out as 11.2. Okay. For the third value 0 0.88 divided by 0 0.036 plus 0 0.084. So, it is coming out as 7.33. The next value will be like this in the same way we will be calculating 0 0.851 divided by 0 0.0185 plus 0 0.1305. So, it is uh, calculated as 5.71, then the uh, fifth value is calculated as 0.8276 divided by 0 0.0069 plus 0.1655 that is calculated as 4.8 and for 0.8246 divided by 0.17 5 4 it is coming out as 4.7. So, now these two points are for extra term. So, now we will be plotting these all these in the uh, we can say this one x y versus z z uh, plot. So, for first we can say this one whenever we have this x is equal to 0. So, this uh, z is equal to small z is will be like the here. So, this is first point then point 0 to uh, 0 0.0239. So, it will be like here also somewhere here 0 0.067 here also somewhere it will be like this. Then, so then we have 0 0.525. So, here actually it will be like this for that 0 0.079. So, 0 0.525 means uh, somewhere here. So, it will be like this 0 0.079, 0 0.73 
somewhere here it, it is 4.099 so it will be like this so just below 1 like this point 0.1 actually say here somewhere and then la, uh, this point 0.885 like this somewhere point 0.885 here it is for point 0.117 somewhere here and for 1 it is point 0.124 like this so somewhere here so if we plot this one it is like touching this we can say, say this x y axis like this so this is we can say this one this raffinate arm so this is raffinate arm for extract arm we can say this one will be getting for y is equal to 0 so this one is y is equal to 0 so it is around 15.67 like this somewhere here for y is equal to point 0.366 so somewhere here so we will we'll have this one for point 0.366 like this it is 11.2 so it is like this somewhere here so it is 11.2 like this so this we have so for this second one for point 0.7 it is 7.33 so it will be like this for point 0.7 that is 7.33 67.33 like here for point 0.876 like this for point 0.876 it will be like this 5.71 around 6 here so it will be like this and for point 0.96 so it is 4.8 4.96 means here it is 4.8 around 5 here and for 1 it is 4.7. So, it will be like this it, it is here somewhere. Now, you see this one we have this all this line if we draw add all this or join all this. So, we will be getting this one as the extract arm. Now, we need to draw this say we can say uh, tie line. So, this one tie line that is we can say this one this first point actually. So, this is one tie line we can say this one. So, this one the second one actually you see this is second tie line then we have this third tie line then fourth tie line then fifth tie line this is the sixth tie line. So, all these are we can say this one all these are tie lines. So, we can say this one say raffinate arm is nothing but we can say capital X versus small z and extract arm is equal to capital Y versus capital Z and these are all we can say this one say tie lines. So, this this is tie line we can say this one this is tie line this is also one tie line we can say this one this is another tie line. So, this is one tie line this is one and this is also one tie line. So, now we have this one the extract arm and raffinate arm now actually we can say uh, using this uh, um, solvent free basis uh, uh, equilibrium diagram we will be able to calculate the entire extraction calculation also using this uh, Janicki diagram. So, uh, this is we can see this one Janicki diagram. Okay. So, so, thank you this in the next uh, class actually we will be discussing about the effect of temperature on the liquid liquid equilibria.